Algebra 1, number 1.5b. We've been talking about the distributive property. Now we're going to talk about factoring and using the distributive property. We learned in the last video that we can use the distributive property to write equivalent expressions. And what we do is, when we see this, instead of just adding the 3 plus 4 inside the parentheses like order of operations tells us to, we can get rid of the parentheses by using the distributive property. We do 2 times 3 plus the 2 times 4. It comes out this way, and it would be the same answer as if we had done it the order of operations way. 3 plus 4 is 7, times 2 is 14, and if we do it this way, we get 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 times 4, which is 8, and 6 plus 8 is 14. Same number. Just remember to keep that plus sign in the middle. This is called the distributive property of multiplication over addition, and it's like a mother bird is the two, and the three and four are the baby birds, and she's taking turns feeding each one, and she doesn't want anyone to starve, so she very carefully makes sure each one gets multiplied. See? Well, if the statement of the distributive property is reversed, we have factoring. That's how to factor. So in distributive property, we took the a times b plus a times c and came up with this for our answer. Well, in factoring, we start with this one and get this one. We flip it around, see? When factoring, it goes in the other way. It goes the other way. It's reversed. So now we start on this way, see? This was our answer. Now this is how we're starting. And we try to find out what they have in common. They both have an a in common. So the a is what's going to be on the outside of the parentheses, and the b plus c will be on the inside. So look at it this way. We know that 6 and 9 are factors of 54 because 6 times 9 is 54. But what factors do they have in common? Well, 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 is the common factor for these two numbers. See? So that's what we're going to use to do this. We can factor an expression by writing an equivalent expression as a product of the factors. See? These two are equivalent expressions, and that's what we're going to do. We find a common factor and then use the distributive property. Now, I've talked before several times about the invisible 1 coefficient. If you do not know about it, this might confuse you. There is a link in the description of this video uh, about the invisible 1, and I'll explain a little bit now. But if you don't know anything about it, you might want to take two or three minutes of your life to watch that video in the link with the link in the description, because it's really going to help you in algebra, okay? So, we've got 3x plus 3y, and we look for the common factor, and then use the distributive property. 3 is a common factor for 3 and 3. And 1, right? They both have 3 times 1. So what we do is, because 3 is the common factor, we put the 3 on the outside of the parentheses and the x plus y on the inside, because there's an invisible 1 in front of every lonely coefficient. If there's in front of every lonely variable, if there's no coefficient in front of a variable, if you just see an a or a b or an x or a m or a p or a q or whatever that variable is, if it's just by itself with no number in front of it, no coefficient in front of it, there's an invisible 1 there, okay? So what we do is to check to make sure we did this right, we try multiplying it. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times y is 3y. So that little invisible 1 helps us because 3 times 1x is 3x. See? So if you don't know about that video, really, really watch it. It's really important, okay? We're going to do it again, and the invisible 1's going to come up again. We've got 2x plus 2y plus 2z, and the common factor is 2. So what we do is we pull the 2's out, and we end up putting it in front of the parentheses, and now we've got 2 times 1x plus 2 times 1y plus 2 times 1z. And that will get us this. So we know we did it correctly. So the way to check it is we try multiplying it. 2 times 1x is 2x, 2 times a y is 2y, and 2 times 1z is 2z. So we know we did it right. That's the answer. That's the equivalent expression. Let's try this one. We've got a little bit bigger numbers now. We've got 3y plus 6 plus 18z. Now, we need to make an equivalent expression reversing the distributive property. So what do they have in common? Well, these two have a 6 in common, but that's not common with the 3. The 3 is common in all of them. So we've got 3 times our little invisible friend 1y, right? 
We've got 3 times y gets us 3y, 3 times 2 gets us 6, and 3 times 6z gets us 18z. So now we can see the 3 is going to go in front of our parentheses. And what's inside the parentheses? The y, the 2, and the 6z with plus signs in between them. See that? All we have to do is write what's in these parentheses in one big set of parentheses with the plus signs in between them. Okay, let's try it again. We got 8, 24, 8x plus 24y plus 8, and the common factor is 8. And yes, they have a 2, but you want the greatest common factor, the biggest one that they have in common, okay? So 8x would be 8 times 1x, wouldn't it? And 24y would be 8 times 3 to get the 24, so it would be 8 times 3y, and to get that 8, it would just be 8 times 1. So now we know the 8 goes on the front of the parentheses. What is inside of here is what's going to be in the big parentheses, x plus 3y plus 1, see? And it equals 8x plus 24y plus 8, this one. So we know we did it correctly, see? Try writing it like this in your notes to figure it out, and that will help you. Because remember, when it's in front of parentheses, that means multiply. So now you know what's in parentheses and what's on the outside, see? Let's try it again. For this one, the common factor is 2. So 2 times what is 4a? 2 times 2a. 2 times what is 10? 2 times 5. 2 times what is 8b? 2 times 4b. So now we know that 2 goes in front of the parentheses, right here, and we know what goes inside the big parentheses. See? 2a plus 5 plus 4b. 2a plus 5 plus 4b. And the 4a plus 10 plus 8b is our original, so we know we got it right. See? One more time, we have 21 plus 7a. Well, the common factor between a 21 and a 7 is 7. So we've got 7 times 3 is 21, and 7 times an a will get us 7a. There's our friend, the invisible 1. So we know that 7 goes on the front, outside the parentheses, and a 3 plus an a goes on the inside. See? We don't need to write that invisible 1. We just know he's there, right? We can check our factoring by multiplying. We multiply the factors to see if we get the original expression. So if we've got 2x plus 8, the common factor is 2. That means we've got 2 times x plus 2 times 4. And we do it. 2 times x plus 2 times 4 is 8, and it gets us back to our original expression. See? So remember, in front of every lonely variable, there's an invisible coefficient of 1. He's not really lonely. He's got his buddy, the 1, there. He's just invisible. If you just see a, it really means 1a. If you see an x, it really means 1x. If you see a b, it means 1b. If you see an m, it means 1m. In front of every lonely variable, there's actually an invisible 1, okay? We just don't write the 1 because we can see there's only 1a. We can see there's only one variable there, okay? So the link for the invisible one is in the description of this video, all right? And if, like I said, if you haven't seen it, you really should, so you'll understand, because we're going to use this invisible one a lot in algebra, okay? All right, we're going to move on to our next video. And we're going to talk about combining or collecting like terms in an expression. We're going to talk about when there are terms in an expression that are alike, how we're going to put them together. We're going to collect them and combine them, okay? It's going to be in 1.5c. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you're doing well. Keep trying. We're going to make it. Bye.